All right, I liked what I saw in that last scene that I did with the blue tones, and uh, I wanted to do another scene based around that uh, color scheme and that kind of spirit of this, uh, I don't know, almost kind of a painted looking background. Uh, very abstract in the, uh, the formation of it, but um, I don't know, it looks fairly grounded in terms of uh, what it was referencing towards the end, which is basically just kind of atmosphere. All right, so we're going to start off with our lightest tone. And I'll work darker. I don't know, I'll switch it around one of these days. I'll go just darks and then work into the lights. It seems like it's, this process, I don't know if it really matters uh, which way you do it, because uh, I'm going back to the uh, the lighter tones of inks anyway. Just your paper towel right here. Okay, it gets pretty good coverage, and you can get a pretty smooth um, application. But if you don't get a smooth application, in the end result, if you've seen my other videos, I don't know if it really matters because if you get you know once we start coating this um, paper, it just I don't know, it's, the foundation layers are not that important because it's, in dye-based inks, um, which I haven't left, I'm just kind of experimenting around with these uh, hybrids, the hybrids you can lay on top of one another. The dye-based inks are kind of more set because they have a staining action to them. Now I'm going to use both in, you know, in conjunction with one another, I want to, or in combination with one another, I really want to uh, see what the two of them do together. I don't know, maybe I'll do kind of uh, a couple scenes maybe for the uh, Mood and Media series, so I'll do you know a couple of the exact uh, same um, compositions but with a different media um, kind of arrangement. I'm thinking maybe dye based inks and then the hybrid inks over them and and another one, maybe I'll just try just solely the hybrid inks. Okay, so I'm going to do a scene based around nature set number one, and it has the country stream in it, so I'm going to leave this area down below here. I have this turned upside down right now just to get it this side nice and easy. Um, but this area down here is going to be a little bit lighter because I want that water to be... Yeah, a little bit more reflective. I don't know. I, maybe it'll be on the horizon. I don't know. Now that I think about it. We'll see. Just kind of composing on the fly. Alright, a little bit more of a perimeter oriented application. Got a little bit of harder edge there. Now see that's the type of thing that will bother some people, you know, when they're doing it themselves. You know, but that's the, the type of thing that doesn't bother me at all, even if I had something much worse, you know, like that. Um, that's not going to be a problem. Things aren't a problem if you don't really, if you don't make them a problem. Now, if we drop a stamp on there or something like that and we get a double image, you know, that's, 
it's kind of, you know, you can cover it up with something or, you know, something or another. You can darken the background, you know, so that the, uh, the, uh, area that you don't like doesn't stand out quite as much, but in scenic stamping, there's always something more you can do. You can really de-emphasize and, or cover something up completely. All right, so that's what we have going on right now. I, I do want it quite a bit darker. I, I thought the, uh, the last scene that I did had a lot of um, kind of mood to it and uh, kind of, uh, yeah, this, this kind of spirit to it um, by having things a little bit um, kind of more subdued. And then we can add in some uh, pigment inks in there. I mean, not pigment inks, but um, yeah, pigment inks, white pigment ink. All right, I'm not sure which one of those was darker than the other. This one looks like probably this color is the medium. The other blue that I'll use is somewhat of a kind of a gray blue. This, this paper towel is fraying, as you can see, but I mean, it's applying just fine. So if I get a little, these crumbs, you know, here and there, it's not any big deal. It's getting it mostly because I'm going over this edge right here and it's catching that. But I mean, if you ruin a paper towel, who cares, right? going to what I perceive as being the darkest color, and I think it is. This color right here almost has a little bit of a greenish tinge to it, so a little bit of a warmer uh, tinge, although it looks just gray-blue on the indexing. Is this a teal? Aurora teal, so it has a little touch of green to it. Slight I don't know. It's green, but I wouldn't call it terribly warm. Just uh, kind of merging into the, uh, um, what is it, analogous um, hue, so blue to green. Okay, so a lot of texturing. This is, of course, on the uh, matte paper, because it's not shiny like this. I'll have to try it on the mat sometime. Let's see that texturing on there. I mean, it looks okay, but I think I prefer it with the um, the white uh, pigment look. So we'll come into there. I'm kind of debating. I, I kind of like that warm tinge, that glow yesterday. I, I know, it was a couple days ago in that scene. Maybe I'll add some of it. Okay, maybe I will add some of this, just to create a little bit of a slight temperature change. Okay, slight green, but let's mix it a little bit with a little bit of white here, okay? And yes, these pads are meant to kind of mix, you know, your inks together, your uh, pigment and uh, hybrid you know, to get different values out of it. That's not what I want there in this, in terms of the end result, but it doesn't really matter because I can just go over it, right? So I'm kind of introducing that warmth into there, just a, well, it's more than a touch. I was going to say just a touch, but and then what you do is you just come out right over it like this and go back in and let's say, let's go, go straight to that blue and then see this come into it like that, all right? And to knock some of that green down a little bit, okay? <laughs> so that's what, I don't, I mean, these inks, I don't know, I don't, 
think that this is the concept for them, but it certainly works, you know, this is one of the, uh, the capabilities of it. I mean, they were meant to kind of mix your um, impressions so that you get um, kind of a dual um, kind of impression out of your uh, designs that you're stamping out. You know, you can mix those two types of uh, inks together. Um, but I like just mixing the colors like this, okay? I like going for these little different textures and whatnot. And I like the, I, I, I like the atmosphere of them. That's what I'm always going for. I'm always going for kind of mood and atmosphere in my uh, pieces. No matter what medium I happen to be working in, it's, 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 it's something to, I mean, you can get a good card by just stamping the imagery and, um, you know, just approaching it from that standpoint. But um, if you want to take your pieces kind of into kind of more of a, an emotional um, kind of direction, I guess, you can do what you do, but all you have to do is kind of work a little bit of value into your pieces. So instead of stamping everything out, like say in black, what you do is you you have m different impressions, um, background impressions in a lighter color, okay? So it just depends on what color scheme you're working in. This is a blue color scheme, so I'm going to stamp some images in blue. And that's what gives you your, gives you your mood. It's a really easy concept. Or you stamp out your images all in black, and then you just come over it with a you know, something like a white and tone over it a little bit so that you have some aspects of it that are gray. And then when you start doing that, you start introducing lighting into a scene. You're saying that light is hitting those objects in a, a different way, depending on how far away they are from you. And when you're aware of that kind of space in between the objects, you're dealing with um, different values. Um, that's where kind of that mood comes into play, you know, and you can think about it, you know, just think about something like uh, imagine yourself out on a, you know, foggy morning at the lake or something like that, and you're looking across the lake and it's real foggy and, you know, it's, you know, the trees in the distance are a different um, value than the ones right next to you or close to you. That's, that's what that is. It's, um, the light is hitting those air, um, distant objects, and by the time it gets back to your eye, it's kind of coming through all that different atmosphere, and thus giving the appearance of it being lighter. So it's it's a simple thing. Just you know, I reiterate, really just don't stamp everything in the same tone. You know, mostly times we uh, we stamp all our objects in black, and then we color them in. Just uh, do some in lighter tones. You know, and it's a really easy kind of a uh, you know, that's one simple way to do it, um, to add that mood into a piece. And white pigment ink is your friend in terms of uh, creating, um, you know, scenic um, lighting too. Scenic lighting and atmosphere. Okay, so anyways, you see what I'm doing here? I'm just kind of layering over this with um, different values of white. It is kind of picking up some of this blue here, you see, because this area out here, because it's a hybrid ink, it's kind of more sitting on the surface, especially if you've achieved, you know, quite a, a good degree of, um, uh, of color buildup on the surface, okay? So that's fun, some fun stuff, okay? And again, it's, you can see just what I was talking about how that, uh, you know, the first couple colors, layers, I mean, it just doesn't matter because look at, you know, this is really quite coated now. All right, now I like to go back in and add, you know, kind of a stronger degree of um, saturation in some areas. So this is going back in with the lightest air, lightest color and look what that does. It almost kind of lifts, but look at the brightness of it though. Maybe some of this area got a little bit, you know, that too greenish looking, so I can bring some of this in. But look at that beautiful tone right over the top of that green. It's kind of more of a, I don't know, like a 
turquoise or something like that doesn't, you know. But look at that glow though, huh? Isn't that fun? It's always kind of fun to do that. So remember just to keep things kind of more of a circular process in that, even if you don't do this, keep in mind that you can go back in and just relayer previous colors that you've already used because it looks this looks now different than what it did you know just on a, a blank piece of paper look how rich these tones are okay when i cut, start coming in here i'm using a little bit less pressure just cuz i'm mixing some of that pigment ink that I've already laid down in with the color that I'm applying. So it's kind of lifting some of it and giving me some version of, of uh, the two of them. Okay, that was uh, that lightest color. Well, let me add a little bit more while I'm on it. Alright, let's go with this medium one again. You don't have to add it everywhere. Just, I don't know, keep it kind of more um, irregular, maybe. some impressions on this white pigment pad and I've dipped in kind of mixing the two so what I've seen on the instructions for these pads is you just kind of if you do that you just kind of wipe it off like that okay and then they have I don't know reinkers for these two so that way you don't have to worry about it okay so, let's go in with this darkest one right here again. Yeah, look how dark that is. That teal. They do take on a kind of a different characteristic the second time around. I mean, I don't know how many, like, third time around would be or whatever. It looks like space, though, doesn't it? Or it looks like... um. You know, we're looking, you know, we're divers or something like that, looking up towards the uh, surface, you know, from, I don't know, 75 feet down or something like that. I'm kind of going for this, kind of creating these little, I don't know, the, the separations. I, I feel it looks kind of like like some sort of, I don't know, maybe like a watercolor look or something like that by doing that type of thing. Which I don't do. I'm not, I'm not a watercolorist or anything like that. Okay, going back to this lightest one again. And let's go into here. Let's see, look at that. See that right there? It separates. We get that kind of that cool little thing. You start to be able to get that the more colors you build up. So they have to kind of be built up enough for them to move. You know, it's almost like a you know, like those um, alcohol inks or something like that. When you hit them with a, you know, a blender or something like that, they kind of they kind of move on you and uh, separate or whatever. So these layers are somewhat malleable. Like I was able to get like a lighter blue through that darker blue. Okay, but look at that. I mean, that it looks to me like there's light coming from kind of the background. Let's go into black and bring some of this in. So 
to kind of stay in an area and really spread it around a little bit. Yeah. Like that. You'll get a nice smooth application of it. Kind of, you know, by working an area. These backgrounds are really fun. Not that these inks have to be used this way either. I'm just, I don't know, I'm kind of getting a kick out of it. I always wanted to have kind of these softer looking backgrounds um, from some of my pieces. And uh, this is one way to do it. Um, probably amongst, you know, many, many. But I have a lot more experimentation to go. Okay, that was black, okay. But see these areas right in here? It looks a little dull to me, so this is where I have some fun going back into it with the lighter one, the light on dark. Okay, so kind of like this. Yeah, look at that nice intensity right here. It's not so flat looking. Okay, and switching off to a clean area. Going in with the white. Go in with the dark and go out with the light. You know, I start this in kind of my lighter areas right in here and just kind of work my way outward like this. Okay. Huh. It's I don't know how it looks, but it sure is fun to do. Okay, so, um, major sheet number one, the country stream. I have to decide which way's up and which way's down. We could do, we could do vertical, but I'm kind of leaning towards doing horizontal, like this landscape. Goes something like this, I think. Hey, you do it off center too. Have more trees here. Or should we go center? I have these other trees that I want to frame this off with too, so uh, let's just go with this one. Okay, now what color do that? And I certainly could do it in um, black, but I, I'm kind of leaning towards doing it in color because I'm going to reserve my black impressions, I think, for the front. I don't know. I could also do multi-tones in the front, I'm not sure. Okay, so... Let's see. All right, this is the medium blue tone that we used. Um, deep space blue. Oops, I got a little bit of that white there on the treetops because of this aspect of it, but that's fine. I, I mean, that would be fine with me if this was a little bit darker up here, but because I'm stamping over this lighter area with this, I think I'll just keep them light. I don't know, a little bit of that white. Okay, I changed my mind. Let's go ahead and utilize this. Let's go a little bit of the white up on some of these trees like this. Okay, so it looks like that. But that's what you're supposed to do. 
And then, uh, I don't know, it's, it's really weird for me to do that. They say that these, these sides do get, you know, color polluted after a while, and that's kind of natural, but, you know, you just kind of re-ink them with your um, white re-inker, and, you know, it's fine. Okay, so, that being said, let me do something down here, too. I'm going to, going to tweak this image a little bit, if you've seen me do this in other videos. I'm just going to make some areas of these a little bit lighter. Just like that. You can see where I've taken off some of the ink on this paper towel here. That way it'll transition off into this area a little bit more gracefully. Alright, this will look like it's floating, but we have other images to add to each side. I don't know if I'll just stick only with this um, nature sheet number one. I, I have some other images I think I want to add into the uh, the mix, but this will be the foundation of it, of the entire composition. Okay, so see this is a lighter value, so it looks more distant. And you can see, can you see the tops of those trees where they stamped out lighter? And that's where that white pigment came, came into play. It doesn't look white, but they look lighter. Okay, so we have that. Let's go with these. Uh, I don't know what this was called. I haven't called these by name in a while. It's on the, uh, the flyer, I think. I want to say these were tree-lined hills, but I think I called it one of the Stampscapes images that. This isn't really a... This is a... I mean, it's a Stampscapes image, but um, I released these stamps um, with a stamp in the hand years ago. And at one point in time, they stopped selling them, so I just put them into my own collection. under the Stampscape's name. Okay, so see how that kind of rounds out that whole area in there. All right, let's do this here. I'm going to do these trees in this same blue. Okay, so we'll we'll be sandwiching. Well, not sandwiching, but these will be kind of the more distant <laughs> foreground. Okay, so there's going to be some foreground, but we're going to create some distance within that foreground, and we'll just go with some. Know, darker trees here. I don't have to do really do the side and continue that river, you know, um, river stream down there if I don't want to. I could if I wanted to, but uh, let's just put some trees in here. Yeah, like about like so. And we'll do it on the left-hand side as well. Okay. Now, one of the things that's really standing out to me, which I knew would, is after I stamp my imagery down like that, or the bulk of it, composition. What I like to do is I like to go in and anchor my objects a little bit more. See, the, this area in here, I mean, it looks okay, but it can use a little bit more toning, okay? So this is where you can go in and do some little refined um, touches. All right, now, the stylus tool would work really perfect for this, you know, thing I can go in and Add in these little marks like this, okay? But let's just stick with the paper towel right now. Um, there's a lot of household items out there that are, you know, 
greatly underutilized. And uh, there's a lot of great tools out there on the market for doing this type of thing, such as those stylus tools, but it, you, you shouldn't let that stop you if you don't have certain things, in, especially in terms of applicators. I mean, if we're working with some sort of specialty ink and we don't have that ink, you know, chances are you're not going to be able to get that certain look that those inks, you know, are the most um, conducive for, you know. You're not going to emboss with dye-based things or something like that, but as far as applicators or something like that, you know, um, just look around and uh, think about, you know, what could possibly work. Think about the the concept of something like this. It's a sponge, so maybe you can try a kitchen sponge or something like that, you know, um, a rag, paper towel, cotton ball. I've tried some things, and some things don't work as well as others. But they do kind of work to an extent, at least. All right, this is kind of the medium blue. Let, let me let me go with this uh, lighter blue here, I think. And we'll work our... Oops, <laughs> I just tapped that into the, the white for some reason. I wasn't thinking. Okay, so let me just go into this light blue here and... Uh, all right, so on this little hill here, this little mound, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and uh, tone in kind of the bottom side of it a little bit. And I'll leave the top side of it a little bit lighter. So I'll, here I'm going to try to transition it slightly. Okay, I'm working upside down because it's just easier for me to see what I'm doing that way. But you see that? Now see these areas right in here, I'll do the same thing, okay? So let me try to work on it right side up so you can see a little bit more what's going on. I can come into my water a little bit too, but see that right there? I'm going to start off with a lighter tone. But see, isn't that giving it a little bit more kind of visual weight? Um, like that. I can go down in the shadows a little bit and create some shadows underneath my trees as well. Something like that. see this water down here. One of the things I like to do in this water, this is what this really needs to. Um, let's go back in with this lightest of color. Now that I know where the imagery is, I can do this type of look here. What I like to do is I like to get, give the water kind of these horizontal striations like this. Okay, So I'll just kind of come into the scene like this from the perimeters like this, and put a few little streaks on that water's surface, like this. So that kind of, it gives it a different texture than that surrounding, you know, kind of the surrounding grassy hills. Let's go a little bit darker. I, can't, I, I can barely see those ones down here. All right, now the uh, stylus tool would be perfect for this, that little sponge edge, but we can do it on, the, on this paper towel as well. I'm just kind of trying to keep a, a real light touch, okay? Now let's come back from this side and go this way.
And a little bit more to the sky and whatnot. Kind of shading the hillsides a little bit. I guess you can do that for the sky too, if you want to. You can kind of come into it like this, these little striations. Let's try it a little bit more. Let's go a little bit streakier we can here. some of that white pigment again. I'm kind of adding the shadow parts of these areas, right? It's, it's like a darker streak. So what we can do is we can kind of complement that with some lighter um, streaks in there as well, lighter strokes or whatnot. Kind of when I'm adding darks, I usually go from the outside in. When I'm adding lights, I usually go from the inside out. Um, especially with this medium, because if I go from the outside in, I'm just going to be dragging some dark colors, and by the time I get in here, it'll be dark, and I'll be adding dark into the dark instead of adding light into the dark. Okay. Kind of adding some of the landscape as well, making things a little bit more kind of foggy and hazy here and there. Oops. Okay, now there's a lot of dark on that, so I need to switch out. All right, this is where I'm, there is a, some point in time when I start getting a little bit more free with these inks, when I kind of realize what I'm kind of doing. I don't know if I realize what I'm doing here, but uh, kind of the look is starting to come together uh, for me. I know it looks real kind of blotchy and things like that, but that's kind of that atmospheric types of a, uh, type of texturing that I'm that I really like and it is obscuring a lot of the imagery but I happen to like that look anyway okay here we go with that There's a different kind of spirit to it, I, I, I think, um, than what it looked like before. Okay. 
This is a darker, I mean, uh, another tree, and uh, we'll do it in a darker color. I don't think I'll use the whole thing, I'll just be using the top, so if this is hanging off a little bit like it will be, uh, no big deal. Okay, so let's do it in that teal color. Maybe I'll hit it with a little bit of that white up here too. Okay, something like that. And I'll put one over here. I don't know if it'll be dark enough. Well, we'll see. You know, over the top of all those other trees. But we can always go to black or something like that. Eh, it didn't really work out there in terms of that lighter area. But that's all right. It's just another layer <laughs> when it comes to these uh, types of inks. I'm finding that you can just kind of, you can just kind of keep working it. You know, and uh, I don't know, kind of everything's fine in the end. Okay, see these multiple toned um, impressions. In fact, I need to try something right here. Let me just there. I just stamped right over it again with another top of the tree there. All right, now one of the things I really loved doing on the this, I don't know if I did on more than one. I don't even remember now what I did. Um, I really like going over with this uh, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. I mean, everything is really soft in here and kind of atmospheric, right? So this is just a simple way to go in and add some you know, a different texture into it, you know, a nice crisp texture rather than kind of those more kind of undefined and very soft um, elements and impressions of all those images. There's a lot of softness going on with them, especially because I didn't stamp them in black and just leave it. I kind of went over them, blend, uh, did some blending on them, and then added some white pigment ink and um, etc. Doing all that stuff kind of softens up the overall look. Okay, let's see here. Now oh, let's do it from the top down. This will be, I don't know, it represents snow or something to me. It's really perfect for uh, this blue color scheme, but you you, you know you can just do this effect for uh, you know any type of thing you want. Subject matter, you, waterfalls. It's great for that. Alright, I kind of went crazy with it on this one. It's so much fun. I mean, it's the type of technique that we do in, like, you know, as kids at kindergarten or something like that. You know, splatter painting. Let's take a look at that. Look at that atmosphere now. I mean, isn't that really fun? You know, that this look here. Alright, um,.
the this is where I was talking about um, combining some other imagery into the pieces. Um, I mean, this looks okay as is, but uh, just a few other kind of elements might kind of really make it pop and uh, kind of expand on the uh, oh the depth and texture of the piece, um, lighting. If you do something really light, the other areas, you know, areas or objects within the piece seem that are lighter than it seem as much lighter as this, you know, or whatever you image use in there is darker. So if you add black to that, everything just seems lighter by contrast, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so let's do this one in black. So sometimes I reserve just only, you know, the uh, closest of elements um, to be done in black you know, to, to contribute that um, depth uh, to the piece. Okay, this is the leafless pine's large. It's fairly large, so it can really handle just about anything in terms of uh, um, height, you know. Okay, see that right there? How dramatic that is? Or it can be, at least. So we've created a lot more depth in the foreground and in the piece in general. All right, let's kind of balance it off with a uh, with another one here. I mean, we can do a tall, you know, full pine as well. But <laughs> kind of doing these dead ones is kind of nice because um, they are bony, so you can see what's behind them. You know, if we did a full pine tree, it would just you know it'd fill up that entire area. So things like these larger kind of foreground area types of uh, um, graphics, you know, these uh, stamps uh, allow us, you know, give us that depth without, you know, covering everything up. Let me try to get this. Okay, that's what it looks like right there without the glare on it. Look at that. Splatter proof tech, uh, splatter uh, painting, texturing. But look at the, this depth right in here. Isn't that fun? And it looks kind of soft, but you have that contrast against the, you know, having something really crisp um, within that space. Okay, let's go for, let's play around the scale a little bit. Let's use the smaller version of that as well. Always keep your um, tack and peel plastic uh, covering. I'll go real low right here, so I don't want to cover up um, too much of that, um, you know, what's going on there in terms of depth. Well, I covered up a bit. <laughs> I don't know, this is from an emotional standpoint, but there are dead trees out in the wilderness. You know, let's see something like that. Let's see what those black ones kind of, they lend themselves to a certain type of, uh, I don't know, um, coverage, coverage area, I don't know, whatever you'd call it. But you can see through them, so 
Uh, they're perfect for the foreground. You can use them in the background too, but um, use them in the foreground and background. If I did this in a lighter tone down here, it would look more distant like I did in the, uh, the previous uh, um, video. All right, now this area down here is wide open for um, some kind of quote stamp. And I'm thinking that would be good. I mean, I could put, you know, like a fisherman or something in here too. That might be kind of interesting too, but let me look around and see what I have. And uh, I don't know, kind of what stands out the most. Um, like something like this. I don't know, someone wouldn't be out fishing, but uh, I don't know, it's kind of the spirit of it. It's kind of quiet and whatnot. Maybe a quote would look good up there. All right, hey. I think I just talked myself into this one. Let's go with uh, let's go with this blue here for this. If I do it in a blue, it'll look farther back in the distance. If I do it in black, it'll bring this character closer to us. But I think the uh, the blue here. Going for some test impressions. It, these pads are just so new. They're really, really juicy. So I want to know what I'm kind of uh, um, utilizing. It needs to dry a little bit, see how wet it is. And when it dries, it'll kind of be more mellow um, within that space. Okay, let me go and find a quote stamp, I think. I think this is a perfect area for it up here, provided it's not too pebbly with that uh, um, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White on there. Those little dots do leave, you know, these little micro raised areas, so. Um, sometimes it's hard to stamp over them. Okay, I think I found one that, I don't know, I just want to do. Man's heart away from nature becomes hard. Uh, quote by Standing Bear. I don't know when the last time I used this quote was. I, there's a lot of different quote stamps out there. and There's so many of them. It, just, it takes you a while to... Uh, kind of repeat any of them. But, okay, it's not only just, it's the quote that I think fits, you know, this uh, guy right in here. Could be a woman too, but um, I think it would fit right in here in white. All right. And uh, let's give it a shot. It's a little bit pebbled in there, so I don't know. It's the lettering might compete with some of that uh, tone in there. I tell you what, that being said, let me take a little bit of this right here. Okay, and I'll knock some of this white down. That opaque white, or the bleed proof white, is. Um, you can stain it. You can go back over it and color, you know, those dots blue or whatever if you want to. Or whatever color you want to, because it's kind of like a chalky paint, so it's it's very accepting of media. Okay, so anyways, you can see the difference between this side over here and this side right there. It's much darker. I've toned it down, but I do have the texturing up there. Okay, let me do a couple practice ones here. I just need to get to know my pad. I just want to make sure I'm inking this up adequately and evenly. Yeah, see, it's that bottom part needed a little bit more ink. So this pad is not, it's, it's not new. So it's not juicy at all. So I got to get at those areas that uh, are the juiciest over the, you know, the whole surface there. So. Um, and it stamps as evenly as I can get it. I, I probably need to get a uh, Brilliance white reinker. This is a 
brilliance white. Br the brilliance inks are known to dry quickly, okay? So they're a good bet for your things like quotes. Apparently I need to get a black one too because the, uh, the hybrid inks kind of ran on me when I was stamping it over an area that was just so saturated. It kind of makes sense. All right. I never know if I'm stamping these things at an angle. If I do, I don't really worry about it too much so far. I've been kind of lucky, I guess. But that's why I'd kind of do those test impressions too, just to make sure I'm stamping fairly um, straight. And that's straight enough right there, but see right there? It becomes hard. I start to lose it a little bit in here where it gets really light. It stands out in the darkness, you know much more but but I think that makes for kind of a nice graphic there um, don't you it's it's the words too but it's also just the combination the marriage of uh, the marriage of text and visuals I love that you know I loved you know working um, with uh, text in uh, different um, visuals, graphics, and whatnot. I took a lettering and typography class and I, in college, which was one of the hardest classes I ever took because it was from <laughs> the head of the graphic design department and he was a stickler for lettering. You know, that's a large part of graphic design. So, um, I mean, micro millimeters matters in terms of uh, kind of establishing, um, you know, the mood of a piece or whatever, you know, good design work. It has a lot to do with text. Okay, so I'm shaking up this white paint pen. One of these is shaking up, shook, shook up, or shook up, shaking up. I don't know, one of them. One of these is a little bit more opaque, and one of them is very translucent because I haven't uh, used it enough. Okay, so acrylic paint pen. I all this texture in here is fairly similar. So now, if I would have had that um, bleed proof white a little bit thinner, I might have gotten larger dots. But it's kind of a little bit less predictable, and you know a little bit harder to handle so sometimes it's just easier just to draw in these extra little um, larger dots I mean, it could be a snowball that's real close to you or something like that or a snowflake I should say okay now this is where I go into this area again where I've kind of darkened up some of it and I can just reintroduce that lighter dot into that area, that element, but without it having kind of having to interfere with the text. So the text stands out a little bit more because I darkened in the area behind it and taken out some of the contrast between some of those lightest of little paint sprays in there, but you can just kind of go back in with it now and you use these dots around the text. All right, let's go in and add some of this to this tree, maybe. Yeah, I can put a little highlight, I think. <laughs> this might not be the one that I've utilized a lot of here. Oh, okay, this one's the one that's really flowing. That one's kind of getting there, though. You really have to shake these up for quite a while. Um, when they're brand new to get them kind of going. Once you do that, yeah, they're pretty well established and ready to go.
really stands out too much, doesn't it? Let me show you what I'm going to do. Let's let's reserve that the lightest of touches for um, some of that um, the snowflakes. Let's grab a blue pen instead, okay? For some of the highlighting. I want to highlight some areas in here, but it'll be very subtle. So on the side of the tree facing the light, I'll just put some of this white this blue lighting. The blue, I mean, as long as it's lighter than the background, it stands out. So it doesn't stand out everywhere, but I'll show you where it does. So this is just a Uniball Signo um, gel pen, pastel blue. Okay, so let me see if you can see this on camera. Can you see these little blue lines right here? You can kind of see it close up like that, but when I go like this, and we look at it from distance, it's much more subtle, isn't it? But what I've done is I've, on the side of the tree, facing the light right here, there's no really white light in here, that's why that white really stood out too much. So the blue, works really well for that. Now on this side, we'll put the highlights on the opposite side of the tree. We'll put the highlights on the right hand side because it's on the left hand side of the light. So this is the side facing that light, okay? Some of these tree limbs I can barely see because they're layered over the top of other ones. So if you can't see it, well, you can just invent it, pretend, you know, put a mark in there. You don't have to do highlights only on, you know, the side of the tree facing the light. I, I put some on the other side just to balance it out a little bit, but it'll be predominantly left side lit, okay? You can do it up the trunk as well if you want to. It just makes it look a little bit more dimensional too when you add um, highlighting on something. You're saying that light is hitting it in a different way. It just looks 3D, so kind of, you know, or a little bit more three three dimensional. This one could use one too. So here we go. You can really see it on this one a little bit more. Here it is on this one. See those little marks like, like that line there and there. On these ones you can see it on the, uh, the branches, and the trunk right here. We can use it a little bit more right here on that piece of the trunk, huh? Something like that. depth right in there. I'm kind of debating on whether or not to put that um, kind of a North Star right there. You'd create this triangular type of thing. We have this triangle working here and we can have this triangle working here. If I did that in here though it might create too much of a kind of a focal point, but I don't know, maybe we should just try it. It's 
kind of a 50-50 thing in my head as far as um, doing it or not, but let's just do it. Okay, start off with a little dot like that, okay. And we'll do this one. Um, the points on the star will be longer on the horizontal. Now watch this, I don't try to get this these points in one line, okay, one attempt. I just kind of lightly sketch it in like this. Now, and then I turn that this way. It looks like a comet right now, right? But see that dot where I'm starting it from? And I'm coming this way. Right? And I'll do my downward one. I'll make this one shorter so that the star is kind of in the format of this elongated piece, you know, the landscape formatting. Okay. Like that. And we'll do these intermediate ones just shorter, like so. I don't want that one to stand out so much like that, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce that look, but smaller in a couple areas. Okay, so let's go with... I'll start off with this one right in this. Um, white. Opaque white. <laughs> or bleed through white star right here. It'll be a smaller star, so visually it won't stand out as much as this one. Okay, so there's another one right there. And things tend to, from a composition visual standpoint, things look better in threes, so let's see. Let's do another one somewhere. How about right over here, maybe, or up here? We can do one down in the reflection. Now let's I'm kind of leaning towards, uh, let's group these ones right here. Let's go right here. I'll try to make one even smaller. Okay, there we go. Something like that. Okay. Just your common uh, Q-tip right here. I don't like that ink sitting there, so let me brush it off. As instructed on the internet to do. Okay, just kind of a light dabbing like that. If you watch these videos regularly, you're probably sick of seeing this test piece of paper right here, but if you're new to it, what you have to do is you really have to remove a lot of the ink that you've applied, and in doing so, you're kind of smashing the tip down and softening it a little bit, so what you want is an application like this. Watch this one tap. There's hardly anything you can see, but with repeated tappings like that, we get that little glow there, and that's what I'm going after. That little glow took like 15, 20 taps, okay? So don't smash down harder if you're not getting that kind of that glowing little look to it. Can you see here? Okay. <laughs> I really took off a lot of ink. Maybe I took off too much, but eh, here it comes. 
Is that little glowing little star now? It has a different look to it, doesn't it, from a textural standpoint? There are a little bit around these two. You have to kind of be careful that you don't remove your star, you know, because sometimes this doing this process you're kind of lifting, you know, some of the ink off of there. I mean, if you do, you, you, know, you can certainly go back in and get some more, you know. All right, let's go. What I like to do is I like that add that little element of magic by making these little some of these larger orbs glow or little you know splashes of paint or I could have added you know some of these um, little dots with the, uh, the white paint pen too but just in general it's just kind of adding that little glowing light to some of these um, elements, okay? Some of these dots. It's something, you know, that can be so subtle. Or I don't know if it's subtle, but in terms of a technique, you know, there's hardly any media applied to it. You know, in the form of it's just a tiny bit of pigment ink on these, but it it really can bring um, the piece alive in that area. So we have that little glowing light in there. It, it kind of brings, you know, that element of light into that area. So it really makes it stand out. From a textural standpoint, too, it's kind of a soft looking element amongst, you know, crisp impressions. So we're really expanding kind of the, uh, the visual um, texture range within that given space and in, you know, the card as a whole. All right, I think that looks good here. Let's take a look at it. Let's see what we have. Let me turn down the exposure of this camera. Okay, that's more like it. All right, let's take a look at this. Got that quote stamp up there. I think it stands out enough. It's fairly subtle. And the fact that it's translucent, maybe it fits in with the scene even more than having it just completely white, I don't know. You have that splatter painting up there. You have that warm glow. Look at that glow working over here. It's a lot of layering, okay? The imagery itself looks a little bit kind of obscured, but doesn't that add to the overall look? Now, if it was only that level of kind of um, detail, I don't know if I like the scene, but what it, when it's contrasted against some sharper objects in the scene, like these trees in the foreground, it makes the whole piece make a little bit more sense, okay? So I like having that. Now I've turned this area back in here, which was, you know, a little bit more of a weakness if it was the focal point of the scene alone. Um, I don't know if it's as strong as having, you know, these sharper objects in here to contrast against. And to now it represents... Um, visual depth and as opposed to just being kind of obscured okay so you kind of play those things off of it against one another but i don't know with all these types of layering in like this whenever i finish one of these pieces i just think that um i don't know doing all that layering in there with the uh the pigment inks and whatnot look at my fingers you know um it all just kind of adds up you know in the end i you know i was streaking in some of those things in there and it wasn't going on very smooth but in the end result it really doesn't matter you know I put in some streaks of you know into this water and I was kind of streaking in there with the white pigment ink it it all just kind of mellows out at the end and uh, kind of a uh, ends in a kind of a, um, a pretty resolved uh, visually resolved piece and uh, whole, I guess, you know, as opposed to lacking something um, 
that each element maybe did, but kind of cumulatively as a whole, it, uh, it I don't know, it, 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 it achieves the statement that I would hope that it, it would, I guess, I don't know. I guess that's a good way to describe it, so. And in that being said, knowing that, I don't know, just whatever you kind of throw at it, it, it just seems to come out. And you, some people are saying, well, yeah, for you. Well, I don't know. Splatter paint, you know, splatter painting, that added a whole lot, you know, and that was really easy to do. And then if you add those kind of crisp impressions right here in the foreground, um, whatever's kind of going on in the background, when you do those types of things and add those crisp elements in there, it all just comes together, so. Um, I don't think I feel like adding anything else in here. Um, I don't know, you can always do other things, like you can emboss your word stamps in there, you can emboss like these foreground stamps in there, which might be kind of interesting because they'd actually be raised. Or if an area gets really dark, and you just, you know, the, the trees aren't, won't show against an area that's super dark, then you can emboss them in like maybe white or silver or something like that for dramatic effect. Um, you know, and it would be a whole different look to it, which might be really exciting as well. Okay, so anyways, I try to get the glare of this off. Hope you enjoyed the scene, hope you enjoyed the process, and I uh, hope you give these a try sometime, you know, in terms of the uh, the hybrid inks and uh, in in combination with that pigment ink um, type of look. It's It's really fun, and it's kind of fun to manipulate them on the surface, like such as going back with lights over darks and you know whatnot and achieving kind of the the degree of uh, saturation and layering and texturing that you want to and it's very forgiving in terms of after you get the colors built up I find that they really uh, kind of move around for me and with something as simple as like a little paper towel right and I I don't think I even used one whole paper towel here's the other half of it so I used to have a paper towel on this piece right here okay all right Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, hope you uh, like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comments section.